So, boom. Shakalaka. I've got a good shirt on today. Why? Because I'm feeling good. That's why. Chunky Butts. Woo! Yeah, buddy. Where's that big dog? Where's that big dog? Where's that big dog? Oh, he's drinking water. I can hear him drinking water. Okay, he'll be up here to stick his face on my keyboard in a moment. Um, welcome. It is Houston with a Problem, episode 120. There's that big monster. There he is. Hey, don't you dare stick your head in the keyboard and open up another window again. That freaks me out. Um, we are going to do this. Ready? Bam! Bam! Oh, hey. All right. So, uh, just before we went live, or just after I uh, tippy tapped the um, uh, description for the show, uh, the SEC released a warning basically telling broker, broker dealers to uh, hold their margin close, assess risk. Um, things are getting squirrely. Uh, the globe is very unpredictable. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of an ominous threat. It's kind of type of threat you get when uh, mortgage-backed securities are about to go belly up type threat. Um, on top of that, we know it's earnings week for, for GameStop, so they are trying to just push that thing down as far as they can. So we're at a 52-week low. It broke below 80 bucks at one point. What did it close at today? I forgot to check that um, before we went live here. Uh, 79, yes, it closed below 80. So that's pretty crazy. That's a huge drop today. Uh, we'll be on SSR for sure for tomorrow, but that won't change the fact that they can short us through ETFs and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, 14% drop today. That's nuts. That's crazy. That's complete, completely uncalled for, uh, which resulted in me buying some GME calls for April 22nd. Uh, because why not? Um, most I do. Oh, I picked up some. Meta material calls as well today. Uh, what was I also talking about, Monkey? You guys help me remind me to think. Oh, yeah. Russia asked China to give them weapons. And China's like, eh, I don't think we need to see a bunch of Chinese chinks get blown up by javelins on international television and hurt our chance at arms sales. Uh, so I don't think they're going to do it. Um, and uh, what was the other thing? There's something else. I, I have to look at my own. Uh, oh yeah, Iran sent a bunch of missiles into um, uh, Ir Erbil over the weekend. Twelve missiles hit the uh, air force base and um, consulate we're building there, but didn't apparently hit any major structures, and uh, no one died. So the United States government is just kind of ignoring it and still trying to uh, negotiate with Iran on a possible new nuclear deal. They're like, oh, we're just gonna ignore that for a while. I may have sent twelve missiles, but uh, we got bigger, bigger fish to fry right now. Um, anything else? I think, that's, I think that's it for the top of the top of the show, for um the what what's happenings. Uh, so I'm gonna jump in the chat here. A curious one. Thank you for the super chat there. It's very kind. Um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, curious one. Do you think our boy on the throne has a little pressure to deliver the cosmos? What would you do right now in his position? I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> so, curious one. I, I don't know what uh, what you're trying to. Think of. Our boy on the throne. Which throne? Which boy? Which in delivering the cosmos? Which universe? You may have to reword that one so I know specifically what you're talking about on there. Okay, intro off. Oh, yep, I would have done it. Bam, there it is. Intro is now off. Ha! It's four shows in a row. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, man, that dog is going to town on a bone. I think you can hear it. That's that's the sound of a bone getting ripped to shreds by a big dog. Just just in the in the corner, right there. There it is. Okay, uh, Bill Coin Lou says if it doesn't squeeze this month, it never will. Charlie on Discord says it's, it's uh, going to be 2023, but he presents links data. I'm not smart enough to know who actually knows that. I don't think anyone knows. Uh, that's the thing, is that uh, it's like that quote in Revelations, no one will know the time or day. Um, I, no one knows. We can all speculate as to what the reasons will be, but 
when when will that shit actually hit the fan? I can't predict that. Uh, we're about to have, by the first couple weeks of April, 120 billion and change in Russian bonds go tits up. Um, by the 23rd of this month, Evergrande will miss two point whatever billion dollars in bond payments. Uh, other Chinese companies, another probably 10, 20 billion in bonds that will, will that will default as well. Payments that will then will go through. Um, there's going to be some really squirrely stuff. Uh, uh, I'm really wondering who is going to get their their shit sees, uh, Russian oligarch wise. Uh, a lot of those oligarchs. I mean, think think about the type of pressure this is. If you're an oligarch and you you have a known net worth of like a billion dollars, but then they seize like 30, 40, 50 billion dollars in offshore assets that you hid in various accounts around the world, they're like, "Ha! You actually had 30 billion dollars. We have it all." Now, we could release that money back to you or you could get rid of Putin for us. And um they may have to just go with Putin. Because <laughs> who's going to be loyal to that guy at this point? Uh, Russian broadcasters are sneaking onto their television uh, and, and saying this war is a complete sham. Uh, that Russia's in the wrong. Uh, protesters are getting arrested. Russia really has to focus on internal security right now, as well as trying to invade another country, which is just splitting up their forces. Um, Russia's already sent in a bunch of the riot, con riot uh, control police to try and take towns in Ukraine, which means they're not in Russia controlling any potential riots. So it's a very weird predicament that uh, Putin has managed to put his country in at this moment. Um, usually they're pretty good at, at hammering home the, the official message. Um, but I think a lot of this is, is, is squeaking through because there's a lot of Ukrainians with family in Russia and a lot of Russians with family in the Ukraine as a result. And they talk to each other and that that news is, is passing back and forth. Just from DAX, SEC is saying that broker dealers should collect margin from counterparties to the fullest extent possible. Thoughts? Yes. Um, I think they're all seeing that there's that there is a lot of bonds that are going to be defaulted on in the coming weeks, and uh, there's a lot of risk that assets assets under management are going to shrink. We're looking at maybe a quarter percent uh, to half percent raise in interest rates, which is going to result in a lot of selling off excuse me of of uh stocks um when the market gets volatile people move into into treasury bonds and if treasury bonds are offering higher yields all of a sudden that in you know if you can get one and a half two percent on a treasury bond versus losing 10 to 40 percent on your stocks you're going to move into treasury bonds where it's more stable uh so i think we're going to see the amount of treasury bonds get gobbled up, start to increase as they start to sell off at, uh, uh, blue chip stocks. And I think that's where we are. And so the SEC is like, watch, watch your ass. Um, man, you're just so loud chewing that thing, but you're having a great time over there. All right, so as long as it's not bothering you guys too much, the, the big dog's chewing. Okay, meow meow. Ever hear of Jay Robinson? He starred opposite Richard Burton in The Robe and finished his career as Dr. Shrinker. Uh, Putin is going to go the same way. <laughs> I don't know who Jay Robinson is, so I have no idea. Jay Robinson. Oh, that guy. Okay. All right. Character actor. Dead Dozen 13. At, uh, you know, 83? All right. There's also Jay Robinson, who is a wrestler at the 72 Olympics. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. I think Putin's going to go the same way. I think, uh, I think little Ides of March. We have, we passed the Ides of March. So it might be like the Ides of April might happen. We'll see. Bitcoin billions in margin calls related to nickel prices shooting up. Yes. And the London metals exchange canceled a whole bunch of orders. Uh, weird stuff is happening. So, J.P. Morgan's on the hook for that play by the Mr. Big Metal guy, uh, Mr. Nickel, or whatever they're calling him. Uh, Mr. Nickel wants to keep shorting, and so J.P. Morgan now has to give him billions upon billions upon billions in loans 
this is one of those things where like if you owe the bank a thousand dollars it's your problem but if you owe the bank a billion dollars it's their problem uh jp morgan's got to do a little we might, we might talk a little game theory on the show today but jp morgan has to has to do some game theory all right so if the nickel shorter goes under jp morgan's on the hook for like 200 billion dollars right if jp morgan gives them billions in loans to stay afloat and they keep shorting and it goes tits up they're on the hook for 200 billion plus whatever they did in loans right but but by giving them the loan there's the slight chance that they'll get out of this and the short positions will pay off in the end so they're betting that the short business positions will pay off in the end uh that might happen if we go into a full-scale global recession once we go into full-scale scale global recession consumer product sales plummet value of base metals drop so copper zinc uh nickel those all those all go way down now if that's what jp morgan's thinking they may pull out by giving the the mr nickel guy loans and it may work out in the end because if they short correctly in the long run they'll make a bunch of money back if everyone smells blood in the water and keeps jacking the price of nickel then jp morgan loses twice they lose on their loans and they lose on uh the margin that they gave this guy and everyone's hosed so i think jp morgan is is doing a hail mary and hoping that this all works out in the end by giving them this loan yeah. i give it 50 50 you know it, they're, they're tossing up the end zone there and and a cornerback may come down with it um so yeah i they probably lots of lots of conversations about this i don't think jp morgan can take on those losses that's a lot of cash that they'd be out of uh so it's probably cheaper for them to to fight another day to give those loans out but there's still so many uh people underwater on these uh, uh nickel shorts um the london exchange open M E nickel <laughs> Oh, it's, nope, still suspended. Still suspended. All right. But the price is still at almost 50 grand. Um, yeah. Hmm. But yeah, London, London Mill Exchange is not opened yet. What's Chicago? Chicago. Okay, Chicago, what do you got here? Axios Trading London. We're talking about London. I want to know about Chicago's uh, commodities, man. Well, that's just showing the scrap prices that have gone through the roof. Yeah, scrap prices are up 50% on uh, both copper and nickel. That makes sense. Okay. Did I miss anything there? I don't think I did. All right. Um, gold safe investment. Yeah, gold's always safe investment. It it doesn't waver too much, and if the market takes a dump, gold goes up eventually. Once the market like really goes off a cliff, it's probably a good time to buy then because it slowly climbs as the months go on. After that, I think it was almost two years for gold to peak after the bottom of the market in 09, like March 09. It was like August, September, 2011, if I remember correctly, when gold hit its highest prices ever, or at that time. All right, we wild's got coordinates, so might as well coordinate it up. We are going somewhere in the world. Bam. Oh, Google or off. Oh, oh yeah, my computer power went off apparently last night. Open Google Earth. Go, 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 go. There it is. It's coming. I got giant hangnails bothering me. Bam. Boom. 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 Where are we going? We're going. Whoop. 
to a tabletop in the middle of the Atlantic, in the middle of the Mediterranean. What is this thing? Yep, got a plateau. That looks very much like a, uh, uh, a, a butte. Okay, what are you? Eratos Sneeze Seamount. Uh, 100 kilometers south of Cyprus, a large submerged massif, about 120 kilometers long, 80 kilometers wide. Peak lies at depth of 690 meters and rises 2,000 meters above the surrounding seafloor. Yes, Eratos Sneeze Abyssal, Abyssal Plain. So this was basically a mountain six million years ago. So there's a big mountain sitting up here. There's Cyprus. Uh, so six million years ago, the Straits of Gibraltar were closed off right here. And this whole Mediterranean was a big, giant, dry, salty desert. And uh, about six million years ago, there's a big crack in the rocks and all this water rushed in and flooded the entire thing. So whatever little mountain was right here got covered. And now it's just a little seamount out in the middle of the Mediterranean. Just being an underwater hill. There you go. Back to Big Houston. No intro. Suck it, losers. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Curious one. I know I'm a terrible person, but can you please say boo boo shh rules? A true benediction. You are a saint. Boo boo shh rules. There you go. All right. Uh, Killerus, Boss Blunts mentioned that the U.S. Treasury failed to deliver on Twitter and YouTube today. What does that mean? I did not. U.S. Treasury failed to deliver? Look that up. That's the first I heard of it. Um, come on. Uh, Treasury Failed to delivers, increase 40%. Um, oh, this must be treasury bonds. The treasury bonds are failing to deliver. And that's because they get shorted like crazy. Um, so that was the third when he's talking about the increase in those. Today must be more. Uh, I don't see one from today. That's his pin, pin tweet from the third of this month. Um, so there was a article on Rolling Stone probably 2010 2011 and about basically the everything short they're shorting everything and uh, one of the things I talk about was around 250 billion dollars a year back then in US Treasury bonds being shorted and uh, basically they're, they're creating naked Treasury bonds and selling them just like they do naked everything else and so they're they're shorting the US government essentially uh, hoping that later they can find bonds for cheaper now if interest rates rise those bonds become worth more because people are going to be jumping into those bonds in a volatile market uh, so there may be a lot of folks who also lose a shit ton of money trying to short treasury bonds citadel <laughs> citadel um so oh i just realized my microphone got really far away Hmm. I'll put that back in there. Sorry, maybe maybe I'm sounding better now. Um, and uh, those guys who short those treasury bonds might be in for a big surprise here. They may they may they may get squeezed, and we may see bond prices go go bonkers as a result. Okay, Peter Joy. Yes, it looks like the market did shit the bed today. At least for meme stocks, for sure. I mean, <laughs> although there's a graphic. Someone, a couple people sent me today showing, um, oh, let's see if I can find it. I don't, big dog. I, uh, you just got you're breathing all over me. Okay. Let's go to there. Let's go to there. We got to turn off that, turn on this, uh, bam. Okay. That's the one we want. And then... What was it? Um, MMTLP. Uh, what do they call it? I'll pop up here. I know it well because I've been 
been sharing the graphic like crazy. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Uh, maybe if I do, oh, this is still, nope. MMTLP, what are you gonna be for me? MMTLP calculated? Latest, not old stuff. January 25th, I do have to put the, let me have to put the dollar sign in front of it. Otherwise it doesn't recognize. Oh my gosh. Isn't it fun watching Houston surf the internet because he can't find the stupid crap that a bunch of people sent him today? Uh, one sec. Let me see if I can. Um, not that one. Not that one. Who sent it to me? Problem is I get like 150 messages a day and I cannot remember who sends me what. All right. That's not, not from that one. No, no. Not from that one. My God, man. Was it? Oh, I cannot remember who sends me what. It all just blends together. Okay. It's not, was it you? <laughs> no, 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 not you. Ah, here we go. All right. This is it. Bam. So this is, I don't know where this came from. It's copyrighted by someone for something. Best mated value of dividend shares. This is uh, apparently for Metamaterial, the Torchlight preferred shares, that if oil prices are 30 bucks, no one gets squat. And as it climbs, if oil prices are 150 bucks, the MMTLP would be $123 a share. I have not verified any of this. I have no idea where it came from, who made it, what's happened with it. It doesn't give me any uh, information, but it's been passing around to make everybody get all stoked. I think it's a bit on the optimistic side. Uh, I think if oil's a hundred bucks, we can do maybe upwards of 4 billion for the lands in Texas that might be on the high side, bit optimistic side, but that would translate to like a 20 something dollar per share one. Uh, these folks are thinking that it's it's a preferred share dividend on par with what uh, Dr. Pepper gave when they got when they went when they went through a merger. I think they gave like a hundred and fifty dollar preferred dividend to everyone when they went through their merger. Uh, that is bonkers, um, but you know, exciting stuff. If that's if that's the case, I have no idea how authentic this is, who made it, where it came from. But it's passing around, and you know it's got the correct short count, share count in there. Um, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I like it just because it gives you that wonderful feeling on the inside if it's true. But I don't know how it got calculated or who made it. Okay. Um, Meow meow, your thoughts on terraforming Mars? Will the first Martians be signing up for a one-way trip? Well, yes. <laughs> uh, you can't terraform Mars. Mars is impossible to terraform. It will not be terraformed. It will always be a bleak, deathly, cold, miserable place. It doesn't have enough atmosphere to, enough, enough uh, gravitational pull, enough mass to hold much of an atmosphere. So if we convert it, if we, if we somehow melt what's in the polar ice caps and we convert all that CO2 back into oxygen, then that planet gets freakishly cold because we just removed like two thirds of the atmosphere and, um, or one third of the atmosphere. And all, all that stuff that was, that we removed was keeping it sort of warm. Uh, and then, and then all that stuff gets blown away by the solar winds because there's not, not enough mass there and there's no volcanoes pumping out more gases. Um, and there's no magnetic field because there's no molten core inside of Mars. Therefore, any scary galactic cosmic ray or death ray from the sun pierces right through the atmosphere and slices the DNA of anyone on the surface. And, uh, the other brutality is the stuff called perchlorate, which is so toxic that one, or sorry, uh, 24 parts per billion, which is a very, very small amount is enough to kill you. 
and 1% of the Martian soil is perchlorate. So uh, you'll die. You get that dust on you, you're dead. You breathe in that dust, you're dead. You eat that dust, you're dead. Um, and the only thing that can really get rid of that perchlorate are these anaerobic bacteria that we have in our soils here on Earth. But those anaerobic bacteria, uh, it's too cold for them to do anything on the Martian surface, so they'll be useless. Um, we could probably try and dump them all over the surface, but it's too cold there at the moment for them. They'll just be frozen. Um, and they won't be able to convert those perchlorates back into chlorides that we can uh, are safe for us. And yeah, I think going to Mars is silly. It's just going to kill you, and there's nothing to mine there, so there's no money in it. Uh, you know, it's cool to be like, I went to Mars. But that's about it. I mean, there's no other reason to go other than like I went there and I lost my bone mass and my muscles atrophied and then I broke a hip and now I'm hunched over from osteoporosis. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> ah, Clayton Gross, I love your show. It's the only thing I'll, I get to enjoy because all my money is gone after today. <laughs> Yeah, there, things were very red in the market today, and that just sucked. Yes. Uh, Legacy 10 Productions, Houston, will all the mar this margin call messaging by SEC affect meta materials this week? Go Mariners, happy birthday, Fish Wars mattress. Um, yes. If, if, if you are a shorted stock, all the talk of margin calls has all these hedge funds going, oh no. Um... What are you just herking away down there? What's going on? You all right? Okay. All right. Uh, if you are in short on anything, if you are a hedge fund and you are short on anything, the ominous messaging from uh, the SEC should make you go, oh, shit, no one's going home tonight. We have to figure out what we can dump, when we can dump it, how do we get rid of the stuff, how do we offload this Uh there's probably a lot of chatter about just swapping stuff around, but I think that's really just probably trading one bad thing for another bad thing. Um, at most, you can, it can reset the, the count on uh, failure to failures to deliver, but <clears throat> it still presents a giant liability sitting in everyone's uh, purse. Um, I watched Margin Call again last night. I hadn't seen it in quite a while. And... You know, a big thing is it's this nameless investment bank, the trading floor. They cut a bunch of people from the trading floor uh, and including the risk, assi risk assessment manager. I mean, you know, he's like, I'm working on something. It's pretty important to like, no, no, get out of here. So he passes along to an underling. Underling looks at it. He's like, oh, yeah, we're fucked. And he basically said, hey, if, if the value of these products that we are in the process of selling, these mortgage-backed securities, drop 25%, we all of a sudden owe more than the entire value of this company, right? That's what margin's all about. Uh, the value of Melvin is, let's say, $20 billion, right? But their margin is $300 billion. They owe more than what their company is worth. Now, if you are a big investment bank like J.P. Morgan or uh, Nomura or Credit Suisse or uh, Goldman Sachs, and your liabilities are the fact that you have 100, 200 uh, hedge funds, maybe 1,000 family funds that all have that 30 to 1 margin under you. And they're all about to shit the bed because every single one of them is going to see deep, 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 deep red uh, in the market. And they're, all their bonds are, are, are just vaporizing. Um, your liability is all of their liability. So once they get out of existence, Melvin, you know, their $20 billion in assets get sold off and they pay off a whopping $20 billion of that $300 billion they owe, they still owe $280 billion. Wells Fargo, or sorry, uh, 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 not Wells Fargo, uh, uh, J.P. Morgan does not have $280 billion. They don't. And if it's not just Melvin, but 50, 60, 70 other hedge funds, 150 family funds that all get vaporized the same way, you're looking at tens or hundreds of trillions of dollars in liability. That is, everyone is probably just shitting bricks right now. <laughs> you know, they're like, well, 
Uh, should I just take my bonus and resign? Uh, it's, this, this, this could very well be a big comeuppance. And it could get kicked off by the fact that, you know, a lot of institutions uh, were too diversified into, into emerging international markets that played fast and loose with their money. You know, yeah, you want to invest in a place like China that's got 10, 10% plus year over year growth every single year, year in, year out, because you invest in them, you're going to get 10% growth year in, year out until that growth stops. And we are seeing that China, where 30% of their entire economy is their housing market, and the housing market has just died. It does not exist anymore. It is gone. The housing market in China, as we knew it, no longer exists. And the value of everyone's home has plummeted. And uh, uh, anyone who had bonds related to that housing market have nothing. Anyone who was investing in Russia, because Russia has lots of oil and gold and nickel and aluminum and natural gas, because of Russia's antics with the war, uh, the value of all those products is zero. You have lost every single penny of your bet. Now, if that's the case, you, you immediately have to write off $170 billion in Russian bonds, right? That doesn't count the Russian companies, the big banks, the sure banks, things like that, that don't exist anymore. They're gone. They cease, they cease to be. Uh, and, you know, then we got four trillion in Chinese real estate bonds. We've got eight to nine trillion in missile bonds. They'll never get paid back. Probably won't get paid back. Uh, the, the liabilities of just these big institutions and banks alone on that is more than the banks can come up with, let alone everything that's been traded under margin underneath them for the last 30 years. <laughs> I mean, we've got zombie stocks that were never completely finished. They keep popping a weird, you know, Lehman Brothers stock shoots up a thousand percent overnight. They don't exist anymore. They're not a thing. Why are they popping up a thousand percent overnight? Because there's still a liability on the books for a host of short hedge funds. And they're just hoping that keeps, you know, they're trying to like keep the lid on this thing. And, but you know, it keeps bonk, bonk, bonk. The, the body keeps trying to get its way out of there. These zombie stocks are there. Don't you put your head on that keyboard. You're allowed to just stand there and look handsome. But if you put your head in that keyboard, I'm going to tackle you into the next century. Okay. All right. So, hey, we're only 33 minutes behind in the in the show here. <laughs> um, purportedly stupid. So with this market bleeding the way it is, do GME and AMC holders get fat stacks of cash? Or is it such that a crash that we are left trading a <laughs> corporate <laughs> If you don't know what light is, uh, it's uh, turds, <laughs> turd fossils. Uh, I think they have to pay us. I think they have to pay everybody. That's the only way they can clear these books and get all this liability just done with. So think of it as like a jubilee. Uh, it's going to be painful. There's going to be uh, transfers of wealth. There's going to be... Uh, no, don't you put your head on that. I know you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. You can put your head on the armrest. How's that? Does that work for you? Uh, but there's, there's going to be banks that cease to exist, small banks that become powerful, uh, certain institutions that will no longer be a thing. Other institutions that, 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 you know, become household names in the next decade as a result of these things. And a whole bunch of folks that are in this movement that are going to be freakishly rich and wield crazy amounts of power. Suddenly, uh, I'm thinking about folks that, that, you know, they bought a GME in 2020. They're sitting on 100,000 shares. Uh, they might have so much cash that they just are able to like wield their weight, throw their weight around. And uh, yeah, the, the only reason the Fed have to print cash is to close up positions. And the Fed just throws up their hands, go, you know, close up positions. Then the US dollar doesn't mean anything and our entire economy is useless. It doesn't exist anymore. They have to close positions. They can. They may, they may do it slowly. They may go, all right, we're going to pause all trading for a week, kind of what tra what Russia's doing. Just we're going to stop trading, and we'll open when we're ready. Uh, but all that will do is scare away future investment in the markets. They just have to bite the bullet. They're going to have to uh, print the cash they need to print, vaporize they need to vaporize, and just start over with a fresh, 
uh, uh, clean st slate, or if you watch that uh, Norseman show, nice clean rune stick, uh, and they're just gonna they're just gonna start from start from scratch, um, and you know it's like a big giant do over, <laughs> except a lot of people uh, don't, can't, won't, and don't exist anymore. So this this is this is what we're looking for. Uh, unless GME decides to kick it off with a with a dividend of some kind, put your head over here. There you go. You can lean on you can lean on the armrest if you put your head in that keyboard. Oh, I swear. Um, so there we go. Happy 120th birthday. <laughs> uh, Everton, do you think it's a good time for RC to announce NFT? I think it's an awesome time for him to announce NFT. Um, why not? Do it, Ryan Cohen. I know you watch my show religiously. Do it. I know you're in this audience right now. You're just sitting there quiet. You are, you are like, I can't type. I'm, I'm just going to listen because I love listening to Houston's voice and it soothes me so much. And you know what? I am. I am going to announce an NFT dividend uh, for all of my shareholders just to see what happens out of just pure curiosity. And they deserve it. They've invested in this company. They've, they've held strong. They believe in what I'm doing. And I am going to uh, let them all have a cute little uh, McDonald's Happy Meal toy in the form of an NFT dividend. That's what he's going to do. Right? Right? Right, Ryan? Right. You are. Yes, you are. See? Even Big Dog thinks so. Big Dog even put his head down on the floor so he would stop messing with my, uh, my keyboard. He's fantastic. Okay. Uh, David Wu, Houston, Lehman bankruptcy testimony, 38 minutes, 50 seconds. And one senator said JP, uh, $5 billion collateral call was direct leading to Lehman went down five days later. What is collateral call different than margin call? Uh, collateral is different than margin because you give with collateral, you, you, you literally give a chunk of assets to somebody to hold on to. Um, it's like a pawn shop, you know? If you want money from a pawn shop, you're going to have to give them a wedding ring or a guitar or whatever uh, to get that cash back from them. So you're pawning assets. And generally, if you're pawning assets as collateral, that's like repo market stuff, it's probably going to be something stable like treasury bonds. And when you trade on margin, margin, you're trading against the value of those, of those treasury bonds, but they're not, not necessarily held by the person who's giving you margin. So... Uh, if, if they're doing a collateral call, it means like, yeah, you're toast. We're just keeping this stuff and we're going to sell it because you're never going to be able to pay us back. So it's like the pawn shop selling your ring. You go in, you're like, oh man, I can make rent. So here's my wedding ring. And they go, okay, you're, you're pawning it or selling it. You say, I'm pawning it. So they're going to pawn it for 50% of its actual value. Uh, and you get that money. And then if you come back with that money in a week, they um, you give it back to them it's plus a fee and they give you your ring back. In this case, Lehman Brothers pawned a chunk of collateral to J.P. Morgan. And J.P. Morgan said, yeah, it's too late. You're not paying us back. We're going to sell this. And that's that's when they got their collateral called. B. Miles, if Moas does happen and apes start becoming rich, what three issues do you, do you suggest apes can help solve? Oh, man. Uh, first of all, take care of you and yours. Like, if if your wealth helps your friends and family achieve a better life, boom. That should be the main focus. Uh, if your friend and family suck, then forget them. Fuck them. Move to a private island, whatever. Um, and then do things that you care about. Second, uh, uh, if you are one of those folks that want to make sure that all the kids in your community get free college, then set up a scholarship. Uh you know, invest in, invest in your community where your heart is. And you really can't go wrong with that. Like, I would love if I had enough money to make the baseball field at my high school actually good. It's been a terrible field that everyone, like, snaps ankles on constantly. And you, you know, go feel the grounder and it hits you in the head because it's bouncing off gravel and crap. Um, I would love to professionalize that field. That would be near and dear to my heart. And that, that wouldn't necessarily like improve everyone's lives, but at least it would like quell this thing in my brain for the last 20 years, which is this baseball field sucks and somebody's do a better job. Um, 
you know, if if I I would like to use my wealth to lobby Congress into doing the right thing on stuff. You know? Big dog, big dog, big dog. Hey, don't chew on that cable. That cable is the only one that recharges the headphones. There you go. Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, fight fire with fire, I guess. Like, I'm not one of those people that foresee myself, if I get wealthy, to be like, I must get more. I really am a big fan of beaches and uh, hammocks and going skiing. So I'm probably going to be focusing on that. Uh, but I would like everyone else to have an opportunity that I don't have. Right. Um, I see like, like somebody makes a hundred million dollars in their life and they still are working like eight hour, 80 hours a week. And they're just like mm, more, I want more. And they're working and they're working and they're working and they're ignoring their friends and family and working, working, accumulating more and more and more and more. Think about if they just stepped away and went, you know what? I have more than I'll ever need. I have a life that can be incredibly enjoyed by everyone who ever had this much wealth. And I could just step away and somebody else could come into this position and also amass a wealth that they could step away from. We just need to know when to like call it quits, man. <laughs> right? Like you don't need $300 billion. No one needs $300 billion. Why are you trying to make it a trillion dollars? It's just bonkers. Like chill the fuck out. Go enjoy a beach. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, man, just take her easy. Let somebody else, you know, come in, have the opportunity to uh, take over and be an entrepreneur or whatever. It's just, uh, it's very, it's very weird to me that there's so many people who, once they've achieved such great, vast amounts of wealth, they just keep going. It's like, man, take a load off. Like, what's the point? Of, what's the point of having all this? If you just don't chill out. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Deck P. What's the play with uh, RC and Bed Bath & Beyond? Also love the shirt. It's a good shirt today. It's one of my favorite shirts. Cat's tails. Reads out in the, out in a swamp somewhere. Um, I think what RC is doing is he is cookie cutter stamping. Right? He went to... to he, he, he did Chewy because Chewy was an online retailer that was able to address the needs of folks with pets who maybe it's something isn't uh, necessarily a need now, but they can get toys or dog treats or whatever on a regular basis without having to go to the store, just like Amazon or any other online retailer. And what, they, what he did with GameStop is he went in, took a big chunk of GameStop, and he's trying to reshape the business from not just being a brick and mortar, like a pet store is, uh, but also providing an online experience and then moving into completely new markets like G America and branding pro branded products and um, selling things outside of regular like game consoles and games, but also computer parts and podcasting equipment and uh, uh, figurines and toys. And so they, they're able to expand that market from just a $200 billion a year game market into tabletop games, into uh, collectibles into um, uh, tech and uh, uh, become an online retailer. And so what you can also do is you can take that model of brick and mortar plus internet and go to Bed Bath & Beyond, which is brick and mortar with kind of a weak internet. And you can you can now move Bed Bath & Beyond into a competitor with Overstock, with Amazon, with uh, Wayfair and those things. So um, I think that's what he's doing. He's like, okay, I can take the same model I had and I can re replicate it here. Now, he has no interest in being on the board at Bed Bath & Beyond, but I have no doubt he'll put a proxy on the board or two or three or whatever. He'll clean house of the hedge fund goons that are currently working on the board at Bed Bath & Beyond. And then um, he'll he'll change the entire nature of the company. And, you know, and because he isn't an insider... He will be able to, if this price skyrockets, like all the meme stocks go bonkers, he'll be able to sell that crap and have tons of cash, unlike the GameStop stock he has now. So it's his way of probably generating just a huge pile of cash, should he need it, 
uh, in the future to kind of do the same thing. Uh, I think he's kind of the opposite of a vulture capitalist, one of those corporate raiders, those Bain Capital guys that would see someone like Bed Bath & Beyond and go, yes, we're going to do a leverage buyout. We're going to take over that entire company and we're going to over leverage them to the, to the hilt, give ourselves billions of dollars bonuses and watch them just die in bankruptcy. He's going, I can take this company. I can change this entire culture. I can make it worth a fortune and then I can do it another one. So he's like the, the flip side of that. Rather than murdering them, he's like, you know, Prince Charming coming in and rescuing them. Uh, that's my, that's, that's, if I were to climb inside his brain, that's what I think he's doing. Okay. Uh, da -da. Alex Park, Houston, does the NFT, oh shit, just reset. I was reading Alex Park's question and Alex Park is, uh, Houston, does the NFT dividend announcement have to be made uh, to 10 days or 10 business days before and does it have to be public or just corporations i don't know enough rules about that i thought they had to do it 30 days um but i might be wrong about that they used to have to announce it ahead of time so that they can verify people weren't insider insider trading like oh yeah we're gonna announce a dividend tomorrow and they still discover that like Everyone bought a whole bunch of shares ahead of time or something. They, that's, that's why they have these like dates of progression. Um, usually, I thought it was like 30 days before they could do a date of record. That might be it. So they may announce it or tell the SEC 10 days ahead of time. Then they announce it and that's 30 days till record uh, before it can be offered. Something like that. Um, I'm very curious as to the reasons why they moved it up five days from the 22nd to the 17th to this, to this Thursday. Um, St. Patty's Day. Uh, we'll see. And Jimmy D's liking the shirt. Of course, I knew Jimmy D would like this shirt. This is, a, this is a very Jimmy D. Okay. Takuseki Houston, thoughts on new COVID strains, possibly another wave leading to economy dumping. Um, I, think, I think personally we're going to see China shut down again, which is going to just murder the supply chain might pause it for weeks or a month or so. Uh, they're shutting down some really big cities. Shanghai is starting to shut down. All their schools are closed. Shenzhen um, is completely closed. Uh, they kicked all the tourists out of Beijing. Um, I think Omicron and BA2 uh, are starting to just hit places that manage to avoid infection really hard. It's hammering uh, South Korea right now. South Korea had done such a great job suppressing this thing for so long, but now it's here and it's it's just working its way through South Korea. Their hospitalization rates are screaming. Their infection rates are through the roof. Uh, Asia's getting hit really hard. And now we're seeing BA2 starting to spike in Europe. Um, you know, Omicron went up, back down, and it's starting to climb up again. It's starting to climb up again. And in places like Germany, uh, the BA2 uh infection rate by day is higher than the omicron spike at the moment uh hopefully there is some protection if you got infected with omicron previously if you're protected from having serious illness with ba2 um the vaccine efficacy is in the 60 to 70 percent range against ba2 which means a lot of folks who uh, are vaccinated and boosted are still going to get it although they probably won't be hospitalized and won't get it severely uh but yeah this thing's still with us it's still happening and i know pretty much all the states just got rid of their mask mandates just in time for another wave to start hitting uh ba2 is about 50 percent of infections in europe and around 10 percent right now in the u.s and climbing uh so you know it's, it's a pandemic man it's gonna these waves are gonna come again uh the spanish flu had three major waves and was pretty much kind of coasted after that and they, but there were entire sections, segments of the population that had total immunity to Spanish flu. If you were in your 50s or older, it's likely that you had a flu that was similar in your youth uh, that protected you against it. And so the young middle-aged and young folks on down were the ones that got hit really hard with that one. And once they went through it a few times, then uh, it had pretty much moved on from there. Uh, this is a novel virus that adapts really quickly. And there's still significant portions of the population that aren't vaccinated and haven't been infected globally. And uh, it's, you know, it's going to still go through lots of people and do lots of adaptations. Every time it adapts, it's going to defeat vaccine efficacy 
that much more the next time around. So, yeah, we got World War beginning. We've got pandemic still raging. We've got Chinese and Russian bonds being useless. We've got inflation out of control. So now we've got to raise interest rates, which is going to cause the value of stocks to go down as everyone jumps to, over to safety of bonds. Uh, we've got corporate real estate, toast, residential real estate in a giant bubble. Um, foreclosures through the roof. Uh, what else? What else on the list, monkey? What about you, big dog? You anything? Eh. Just... We're just oh, we're so precarious. Every every single day we are so precarious that I can't remember a date when we weren't this precarious. It just seems like for at least the last year we've just been like teetering on the edge at all times, just waiting for it to go. Uh, yeah. Bob Barker drinks Adrenochrome. That's why he can't die. After Moas, do we all get baby juicers? I thought Bob Barker had died. Bob Barker. Uh, didn't he? Didn't he die? I guess he, oh, he's ninety-eight. He's still alive. Holy crap! So he must be drinking Adrenochrome. He's ninety-eight years old. He's doing all right. I thought he died like four or five years ago. What the heck? Huh? Meow meow. I learned something new. I thought he died like years ago, <laughs> but he just disappeared from my thoughts. Apparently. Huh. How about that? What? He's from Washington State? He's from Darrington? No way. Huh. Up in the sock and still Guamish. That's like, you know, you get some gold up there. Darrington. Yeah. Zero 530 goes through there. How about that? Huh. Well, there you go, Bob Barker. Still alive, still kicking. Way to go, buddy. I did not know that. Okay. Two <laughs> baby users. <laughs> oh, yeah, my my one get baby juicer. Invest invest in baby juicers there, meow meow. That way you can live forever on a hammock on the beach. Okay, fried taters in Hawaii, in Hawaii saying aloha, aloha, buddy. Angelo Torinos, uh, thoughts on Bloomberg terminal screenshot uh, talking about margin calls. Oh, I, th I think I covered that already. Yeah. I think we're going to be facing a lot of people having to f find some liquidity in a hurry. Uh, they may have made a bunch uh, on puts on some stuff today, so they might they might have gotten some cash together. Uh, if you had a if you had puts on GameStop, you probably made a thousand dollars off every single solitary one of those puts today. So why not? What the heck is going on with AMC? Uh, it's getting hammered just like everything else. I mean, almost all. The meme stocks. Let me go to my meme stock list on my phone here. Uh, yeah, Red Dead across the board. Any of them green? Uh, Benry's Capital is doing its weird thing still. Uh, Nokia is green. Nokia is the only one green on my list. So, there you go. Nokia jumped up like 4% pre-market and just stayed there uh, all day. Um... The banks were doing really green today, which except for Goldman Sachs, but yeah, most part either the blue chips were red or just slightly, just ever so slightly in the green zone. Uh, Bitcoin is screaming right now. Bitcoin shot up like two percent in the last few minutes, and now it's falling back down again. <laughs> um, yeah, but again, like VIX up a little bit, spy down a little bit. Uh, um, I just got a notification that, that I now have a wallet in Robinhood so if I ever want to trade crypto on Robinhood I can pass it from one wallet to another now so there's that so I guess if, those, if, if any of you happen to still be trading in Robinhood uh, if Moas hits you can rather than doing your $50,000 a day you can just buy a bunch of Bitcoin with it send it to wherever you want Boom, you're out of Robin Hood. Done. One way to get through it. So I guess I guess if you want to get out of Robin Hood in a hurry right now, if you're still stuck in there and you can't you can't uh, uh, move your wealth out of there or anything, you could probably just sell your shit, put it into Bitcoin, send it to another wallet, and just 
wash your hands of the whole thing. Either it's the dumbest thing Robin Hood ever did or the smartest thing they ever did. Not sure. We'll find out. Um, Ham Fingers, Houston, do you see house prices coming down anytime soon? If the market shits the bed, yes, house prices will come down. Especially if interest rates go up. It's going to be harder for folks to uh, get loans for fancier homes. Uh, there'll be a lot more smaller loans given out, which is going to reduce the number of people that are doing crazy offers on places. I mean, where I live right now, the average home price is well above a million. Uh, a friend of mine uh, just put a two-bedroom townhouse up. He's a real estate agent for nine twenty-five, and it sold in cash bidding for one point three million for a two-bedroom, eight hundred square foot condo. That is stupid. <laughs> you know, yeah, sure, ten thousand dollar a month mortgage on a condo, uh, two eight hundred square foot condo, like that's. About two thirds larger than this room I'm in right now. Bill Coin, good advice. After Moas, don't buy anything. Wait, keep your freaking mouth shut as you will be doing put a target in your back. Yep, that's true. Um, for a lot of you, if you win on this, it might be a good idea to just disappear for a while. Just like close up everything and just disappear for a while. Go where no one knows who you are, hang out for a bit, let the dust settle. And then maybe make a re reappearance after you've evaluated everything. There's a there's a lot of you who live in communities where this kind of wealth is rare, and a lot of them, a lot of people around you might be tweakers, and you may not want to put a, a target on your back. Just, 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 just go, just go to Monaco and live in a hotel for a few months before you figure things out. Why not? You can afford it. Do that for a while. Hang out with other rich people, where you will look like you're standing up because you're in Podunk. You know. East Bumfuck USA. And uh, that's probably good. Good good, good advice, Bill Coin. Space Monkey. Hi, Houston. Happy birthday. And I hope your mom is doing well. I just got to log on. So if you can do a recap of what I missed, that'd be great. Uh, Russia is begging China for stuff. The SEC has basically said, mm, check your margin. A lot of risk out there. Global economy is going, eh. Uh, Chinese bonds are worthless. Russian bonds are worthless. Uh, GameStop and other meme stocks are getting shorted to shit ahead of the GameStop earnings on Friday. Um, and a graphic is going around suggesting that the uh, Metamaterials Torchlight Preferred Share Dividend may be insane. Uh, and I don't know where it came from and I can't verify it, but it sure does make my insides feel funny when I look at the graph. Um, there, that it? That the recap? That's the short, the short who's he, what's it of it all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh yeah, and then there's this giant cyber attack going on in Israel right now. Um, so apparently Israel took some sort of action against Iran. Uh, Israel also about 10, 12 hours ago said uh, we will back sanctions against Russia. And now Israel is under a giant cyber attack from both of them. I don't know. So a lot of government websites down. We'll see. We'll see where that goes from there. Okay. Paraterran, thoughts on the likelihood of Russia abandons the American ISS? That would be a terrible move. Oh, you're doing the, I want to go under a blanket stare. Okay, one sec. She wants to go under a blanket. Um, that would be a terrible move on the Russians' part. It would be a dick move, first of all. But also it would be an act of war. Uh, it would be the equivalent of, like, the U.S. government shooting a Russian diplomat in the head. Like, you don't, You don't do that. Diplomats have a certain status, and we respect that status as a, as a norm among sovereign states, regardless of whatever war or actions are happening. And diplomatic immunity exists for a reason. Um, so leaving a U.S. Uh, member of the ISS behind and not following the 1967 Outer Space Treaty would be treated like an act of war. 
and that would trigger uh, uh, NATO, <laughs> the prime directive of NATO, which, I mean, okay, let's, let's get into some game theory here again. Okay, so Putin is losing. He is losing on every front right now and is about to become a, uh, uh, a vassal of the Chinese super state. Um, they can't do any trade with anyone. Their military equipment is aged and unmaintained and getting just evaporated and stolen by tractors. Uh, they aren't making any headway. Their soldiers have low morale and aren't paid dick. They're running out of munitions, running out of fuel, running out of food. And so if, if, if it were conventional warfare between Russia and NATO, Russia would get wiped off the map. We can see it already that Russia does not have the morale or, or ability to take on any NATO nation um, simply because they can't even handle a non-NATO nation at this point. So this means Putin has to up the tragedy of it all. He's got to make things worse than they were. Um, and he's got to push forward in a way that he can somehow save face, I guess. Uh, uh, I mean, if he pulls back now, then, he has, then he's admitted defeat and he's lost a huge chunk of the Russian economy to, which is weapon sales to other, other nations. And, you know, who wants to buy a $5 million tank when a $20,000 javelin does more damage, Right. So the tanks are just becoming coffins at this point for a lot of those soldiers and getting bogged down in the mud. And they just, it is not the best sales call or sales promo for any of these weapons. Um, and so he's going to have to, he's going to have to press forward and he's doubling down. He's, he's, he's in the sunk cost fallacy that a lot of people get in. You know, talk about stocks, you, you buy a stock and you buy it, think it's going to go up and it just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping until it's zero. And you and your mind are like, oh my goodness, I have to, I have to, it has to go up. I, uh, I'm, and you're scared to sell because you already sunk all this money into it and you want to accept the loss. So you're going to hold on longer and you're in the sunk cost fallacy. Putin's in a sunk, sunk cost fallacy right now. And he is uh, uh, at this point where he's going to have to one up. And if he one, one ups, it's going to be probably nuclear. Small tactical nuke or chemical weapon, or something he's going to try and false flag and blame Ukraine for, but we all know it's going to be him because it's what he does. Uh, and if he breaks, makes it nuclear, that may be a red line for a lot of these countries in NATO and go, you know what, we're fuck it. He's already going nuclear. We may as well just go in there and just do our thing. But, you know, if we, if we move in, he goes nuclear. If we don't move in and we wait, he's going to go nuclear anyway, right? So we, do you want to get blamed for it or do you want to get blamed for not taking action earlier? That's what I think everyone's weighing right now. Um, and so he's, he's, cause Putin's running out of equipment. He's begging China for, for more modern equipment from them, which we know is all Chinese made. So, yeah. Uh, but this is going to make, this is literally going to make Putin a vassal state of China, which is exactly what he doesn't want. He wants to, he wants to rule the world. He doesn't want to be like China owns me now. Uh, because China's his only, his only buddy. They're going to get all their oil and gas from Russia for cheap. They're going to get shitloads of wheat from Russia for cheap. Uh, Modi in India sounds like he's going to be trying to get, uh, cheap gas from Russia. Uh, but you know, Modi is also a fascist. Um, I don't know if anyone on here is from India that watches, but you know, the RSS, the saying, those guys are nazis like they think hitler was cool uh they have their own weird little fascist militias and their entire goal is to be able to get away with murdering 200 million uh muslims that live in in our citizens of india uh and so you'll you'll notice like let tulsi gabbard be your bellwether on this because tulsi gabbard's entire presidential campaign was funded by dual citizens who are members of the rss back in india like modi people and so she will do and say whatever modi wants her to say and right now modi wants her to say uh things like there are secret bio labs in ukraine that are funded by the u.s government and just toe this russia line which you know i think the u.s army reserve should definitely 
uh, do something about her. <laughs> she is essentially aiding and abetting the enemy at this point. Um, and uh, she should not be a member of the U.S. military at all. Uh, and possibly should face uh, charges. She's very suspect. Tulsi Gabbard has been just screwy from the beginning. Um, where, how'd I get here? <laughs> how'd I end up talking about this? I don't remember. Uh, we're talking game theory. Putin. I don't know. We'll end it there, and I'll go on to this next question. Space Monkey. Do boosters help against BA2 like they did other strains? Yes. Uh, uh, the efficacy for those who are uh, triple vaccinated so far is like the 60, 70, 60 to 70 percent range. Um, and I guess they're recommending a fourth one. I think the antibodies wane after about three or four months, and then you got to pop back up there, and then they wane again. So, you know, I mean, no skin off my back, get a jab in the arm, take a nap the next day, and I'm done. I don't have to worry about getting COVID. Works for me. I'm okay with that. I like naps. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That started with the uh, likelihood of Russian abandons American on the ISS. That's how that started. <laughs> if Russia does that, that's, that's green light. Also, another, another thing, like, Russia is inviting Belarus to attack Ukraine, uh, bringing in Chechens, uh, bringing in um, um, Syrians, bringing in uh, uh, the Wagner group, uh, mercenaries. And yet, if Ukraine invites somebody to come fight for them, that's no go. You can't do that. Um, I think it would be smart of Biden and, the, and NATO to say, hey, if Russia can invite people to invade Ukraine, Ukraine should be able to invite people to help Ukraine. So, Ukraine, who would you like to invite to the party? And, um, yeah. I, it, we may have to get to a point where we just call Putin's bluff. I hate to say it, because that probably means... But I think it's going to end up there anyway. But, you know, be like, hey, Putin, you have four days to get your get all of your forces out of uh, Ukraine and Crimea. Four days. That's it. Boom. Get them out. And uh, just calls bluff. Because he's never had to face consequences for any of his actions ever. When he invaded... Chechnya and leveled uh, Grozny, no one cared. When he invaded Georgia and leveled Tbilisi, no one cared. They just went, oh, he's got nukes, he can do what he wants. Uh. But, uh, you know, I think we play the odds that A, he's not liked, B, he's not loved, C, he's not respected. And um, we just say, hey, get the fuck out of there, leave him alone, go back behind your borders. And he might go huff and puff and be like, oh, order a nuke. And it's got to go through nine people who all verify it because there's a huge chain of command for there. And one of those folks are going to go, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, or if it makes it there and they press that button, there's a 30-year-old uh, rocket, 50-year-old rocket that no one's checked the O-rings on in that time. And, you know, the fuel line sprays everywhere and it blows up in the silo and wipes out an entire legion of nukes. Uh I know it's really morbid to talk about, but P Putin is going to do something to heinous because he's losing, and he's got a one up, and that's just how assholes work. You guys, have, you guys have all dealt with assholes. They will, they will keep pushing the boundaries until someone just bronk puts them in their place, and then all of a sudden they're like in this box like a mime, and they won't leave that box for a long time. And I think, uh, I think Putin, Putin is like been stretching his arms and legs too much, and he needs to be like put back into a box. Otherwise, it is going to spread. He's going to go from Moldova, and then he's going to take, you know, he's going to move into non-NATO countries, maybe Armenia. You know, it's just it's just going to keep going. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, I am. Oh, I'm an hour behind now in the chat. Well, screw. We'll, we'll skip ahead because a lot of those questions are the same thing over and over again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sherry Batista, what's the strangest thing that ever happened with a student? 
Oh, man. Been some weird ones. Uh, I had a student who, you know, he, he had a, a disabilities waiver, so he was allowed certain compensations for uh, stuff in class. And he was allowed um, extra time on, on doing a test and like a quiet space to do that test. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And it was on the computer, like this is math class where all the stuff is on the computer is awful to teach because teaching math on a computer is just the stupidest thing. And I gave him this concession and then I discovered he was cheating. And he was like using that time, quiet time by himself to like have Wolfram Alpha do all the math for him. And so I was like, hey, you're cheating. Uh, you can't do that. You're going to have to do this stuff um, with me uh, uh, in the room with you. And um, I can't give you that compensation anymore because you violated his trust. So he filed, I ended up having to like fail him because he didn't do that. And he filed a grievance against me. And uh, and then he threatened to like blow up the school. <laughs> so I was like, huh, okay. So we were at a point now where um, uh, that moved on. Another student also that never showed up to class, showed up one day in the entire semester, just one day. Show up for one quiz on one day. Never did any homework. Never did any other quizzes. Never took the final. Didn't do anything. And he, you know, he did like, like a C or a B minus on that one quiz. And I had to fail him. So he files a grievance. And he uh, uh, brings his dad to this meeting between me, the dean, his dad. His dad's like, I pay a fortune for this school. And you're just failing my son. He showed me his, his grade on that test. And you did fine. I was like, well, first of all, it's a quiz, not a test. And he only showed up to one day out of four months of classes. He's like, he what? And then we had to stop him from murdering his son in front of us. You son of a bitch. You don't know how much money I paid for this school. Uh, dude, I'm sorry. Uh. And I was like, oh man, that was interesting. <laughs> so yeah, those are interesting. Uh, I had a student who, he was uh, special forces with the army, got out, was reserve, but still like Green Beret or something like that. He'd get called up a lot. They'd be like, oh, you're back up on active duty, go somewhere. And so he, um, he's like, Hey, I'm being shipped out. Send this email. I'm being shipped out tomorrow. Uh, is there a way I can like do my final still from wherever I am? And it turns out, you know, he was like three o'clock in the morning for him. And, uh, uh, he did his final on, uh, not zoom what was the other one. One that Microsoft bought that used to people used to do all the time. Skype. So he did his final on Skype at like three o'clock in the morning in the Philippines because he was in some sort of like bushland war with Islamic terrorists in the Philippines and like would do his test, hold it up to the camera. I'd take a screenshot of it and grade it, and he'd do the next one, hold it up to the camera. It was odd. But I mean, more power to him, man. Getting his education, doing it while he's like in a tent on a satellite phone in the middle of the jungle. Like, good job. Okay. Um, like Zen Productions, Houston, are you still considering HYG puts any more? Not financial advice. Uh, I mean, I might not try to play weeklies with them. I might go for something longer out. I kept trying to do weeklies because I kept thinking things were going to like dump that week and everyone's predictions were always wrong. So uh, if I do puts on Spy or HYG, it's going to be a little bit further out. Yes, they're more expensive that way, but it um, gives you more time for the ups and downs of the market to be like, oh, panic sell. Oh, I made $100 or whatever. Uh, so if I if I play those things, it's going to be a little bit further out and not necessarily weeklies. Um, James Cam Houston, are GME holders going to the moon Thursday? I've been in a year and three months and waiting. My guess is, so after hours Thursday is when they'll do the, the, the earnings call and they'll be after hours shorting like crazy and they will short as much as they can Friday to hammer that price down. Every earnings call, no matter if the good news is good or bad, they will just <laughs> hammer that thing down as far as they can go. Um, they don't want any, any good news whatsoever. They will try to spin it however they can. Like, you know, earnings are up 500%. Like, earnings really weren't up that much. You'll start to see stuff on Market Watch and Seeking Alpha or whatever that just poo poo whatever good news there might be. Um, which is why offering a dividend 
would be a very, very, very wise thing. Even if it's a small dividend, you say, hey, we're doing, we're doing a dollar a share dividend. Um, that could be enough to be like, oh, shit, GME is on the move. Or they could do, you know, an NFT dividend. I'd be happy with that. Big dog, you're pacing around like you are worried. What's going on? What's going on, buddy? What is going on? Okay. Pretty son, if you're looking for a decent sci-fi-ish show, check out Severance. Never heard of it, but I'll check it out. Um, Lei Lu, Melvin said they exited their short position back in February 2021. That doesn't mean they closed them. I believe someone else took the bag and it's still out there. Your thoughts, Houston? I think that's exactly what they did. I think, if anything, Melvin uh, is just masking their holdings. They didn't close shit. Um, and then they've, they've been losing, uh, uh, tons of, um, uh, investors. People don't want to invest with them. Why, why would you want to invest with somebody that loses 50% of your money in a year? <laughs> like, Hey man, I, I can do that on myself. I can lose 50% of my investment all by my lonesome. I don't need somebody else to do that for me. Uh, I'm perfectly capable of doing that myself. Um, Bobby Norwood, read what Eggspit wrote about metamaterial. Eggspit. Is that uh, Twitter or Reddit? Because I don't know which one that is. It's a big dog. I can't type with you constantly moving my arm around. Eggspit. Uh, must be on Reddit. Boom, 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 boom. Search egg spit. Uh, I got a U egg spit, probably. U, bing, bing. Nah, eh, nothing popping up. You have to send it to me. Bobby, send it to me. DM it to me on Twitter. I'll, I'll read whatever they got there. Um, I'll check that out. Okay. James Cam, if you were to choose a pink OTC stock with future potential, what would you choose? Oh man, pink sheets. Pink sheets are pink sheets for a reason. It's because the company basically ceases to exist anymore. Uh, but if I were to choose something out the pink sheets, I would choose something that perhaps went there in 2008, 2009, 2010. That's a zombie. Um, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. But those zombie stocks have had crazy explosions in value that go from like one thousandth of a cent to five thousandths of a cent. And you can five extra money playing with those things as long as you get out eventually, right? Um Yeah, that's uh that's the way I look at it. Playing with pink sheets, always understand that 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 you either will double your money or lose everything. That's kind of how it rolls. Because <laughs> like sometimes you feel like, oh, this thing's going from one ten thousandth to two ten thousandths to one ten thousandth to two ten thousandths. I'm just gonna bing, uh, bounce that sucker off of off of the uh, the the seller it's in, that it's in, and then and then you might be playing that for a while, making some money, and then you do it one last time, and it never recovers, and they just close out your position for you and give you a check for like five dollars. Um, that happens also. Cameron Mirza, March 17th is Ryan Cohen's dad's birthday. That's true. Apparently, Apple Falls doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, Maria Garcia, thank you for that. Very kind of you. Uh, it's 419. We got time. Okay. Na, 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 na. Wall Street, let's move that burning house next to that burning house. Problem solved. <laughs> uh. mill do you think super stock has become overly cultish echo chamber last two or three months? I think super stock has been compromised by hedge funds. That's what I think. I just don't go in there anymore. I used to go there. Eh, I don't go anymore. Um, I was talking about last show. Like, if you want to make a quick 50 to $100,000, 
you start a popular meme stock subreddit and you will get an offer from someone to either have them buy your account from you or uh, uh, become a, a, an admin for your for your for your group. Um, I mean, heck, might as well be milking them dry because they're going to do it anyway, right? So might as well get that hundred G's and dump it into GME in the pro in the meantime. Why not? You have to sign some sort of NDA that says uh, these guys offered me this money. I mean, you could basically say you could probably turn um whistle sec whistleblower and be like hey these guys offered me a hundred thousand dollars so they could take over this page and manipulate it uh and then you can get probably a million dollars of whatever fine part of fine for that whenever whenever you get approached by a shill to do something sketchy for money turn whistleblower with the sec might as well get get paid twice right why not if, if a hedge fund approached me to, to buy my channel, I would sell it in a heartbeat and then I would turn state's evidence with the SEC and get paid twice. See you guys. The show's not that important to me. <laughs> I just made millions of dollars off of nothing. And I'll just start a new YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, Javel Clay, happy birthday, Houston. Was the worst case scenario for MMTLP? So oil prices collapse to thirty dollars a barrel. That's probably worst case scenario. Um, as long as oil prices are are screaming like they've been as of late, we're cool. We're gonna make some money off of it. Um, People talking about things they want, they're going to help with. They want health care. They want a, homelessness. They want to help animal shelters. Financial class for high schoolers. Yeah. James Conn, Snog, Mary, Avoid. Plotkin, Ken Griffin, Dave Portnoy. Ugh. Ooh. Um, man. Uh... I'm just going to avoid Portnoy because I don't think I could be in a room with that guy. Um, I'm going to snog Plotkin and then take the money out of his wallet. I'll marry Ken Griffin simply because uh, uh, I'm going to get something out of that divorce. How's that? Does that work for you, James? <laughs> yeah. That's an awful one to think about. Okay. Oh, and of course the chat reset. And of course I am now, eh, well, we are stuck a ways behind. We're not forced to go in the middle of the chat here. Okay. Uh, so now I'm only like 40 minutes behind again. So that, there we go. So if I missed you from like 3.20 PM to 3.40 PM, I'm sorry, you're gone now. You don't exist anymore. Okay. People talk about my my post Moas plans. Not very psycho of me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I I get joy out of working on projects and putting smiles on people's faces. And uh, if I can use my any wealth I have to doing that, that works for me. Um, and I like to go skiing, and I like the beach. And I like going for walks with dogs, right? Big dogs and small, medium dogs under blankets. Are you still down there? Oh, there you are. Hi. Let everyone see your little face. You see your little dog. There you go. Okay. Oh, can't see her face. I gotta adjust that. Here, there she is. Okay, there's a monkey dog hiding under her blanket. The big dog's at my feet right now. And just he's like a weighted blanket. He he is a hundred and something pound uh, lap dog. He just wants to curl up and try to sit on you as best he can. Okay. <clears throat> Project Sun, the hope is RC, RC is putting big pressure on the meme baskets. If he exercises options, we'll own over 10%. Yeah, it's true. Exercise, exercise them options, man. 
uh, I hope I'm not butchering your name, Kira, I think it is. Um, Houston, what would a market crash or correction mean for MOAS potential? Wouldn't hedgies make tons of money from puts and such, and GME value would decrease, equal increased margin for hedgies? Not necessarily. Uh, if they might make some cash off of puts and calls, but it would still mean that their assets under management would shrink significantly. And unless they can turn that cash into assets, uh, they would have to present that cash as as a counterbalance to their uh, uh, margin that they have on these companies. Um, and if a lot of their assets are tied up in foreign bonds, those things are just going to vaporize. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think a lot of these hedge funds make it out of this. I think their liabilities are just too big and, and, and they won't make enough cash off any of these plays if it, if it collapses too much. Cause remember puts can only go so far. Puts have a limit, right? Stock price is here. You buy puts at most, it can only go to zero and you can make money from here down to zero and that's it. Now your liabilities, on the other hand, the sky is the limit. So your puts may have a price that drops to zero and you make, you know, whatever thousands of dollars off each one of those puts, good for you. But if there is forced buying of one of these uh, 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 meme stocks and the price climbs beyond what the value was on those puts, then you just have infinite liability all of a sudden. Uh, and that's, that's the name of the game is that there's infinite risk on shorting a stock and they are going to assume that risk at some point okay uh, James Cam surely Blackberry would be a good play for RC and you use security of, uh, for GameStop and also get a stake in other meme stocks at the same time. I mean, why not? <laughs> uh, BlackBerry also has supply chain um, for uh, processors and electronics that, you know, you could co-opt that for a lot of your name brand um, uh, products that you're going to be putting out there. Uh, BlackBerry is a weird company, though. I mean, they were like the shit they were first it was windows phones on palms on like palm os's or whatever they brought the windows in and they started the first smartphone and then blackberry jumped in there and took over for a while and then it became a uh, google phone slash samsung and other brands that use google android and then apple jumped in and blackberry got murdered palm doesn't exist anymore uh, there's no Windows phone stuff. Those are all dead. They died with a giant Hail Mary of that awesome uh, Nokia phone that had like the 100 megapixel camera, 42 megapixel camera, whatever it was. Uh, but yeah, BlackBerry pretty much works on security now. For a while, they had great contracts with the US government because they're the most secure phones and they could easily produce uh, uh, SIF phones that didn't have cameras on them or recording devices. Um, but I don't know what their contracts are like that for now. Mm -hmm. yeah, they work mostly doing security now or digital security. Back when they're called Research in Motion, I had a friend that did database management for them referred to it as his rim job. But I think they realized that rim jobs uh, probably wasn't the best marketing scheme so they switched their ticker to blackberry <laughs> jethro houston mmtlp divi talked up to 20 plus dollars could they will divvy it between that amount of shares that exist instead of how many there should be saying it's been trading on the exchange as excuse uh, they will send it to the number of shares that should exist that are not synthetic. And then if there are any synthetic shares out there of MMTLP, that money is going to be the responsibility of whoever shorted that stock, whoever created that synthetic. And if they can't pay it, then the broker has to pay it. And the broker has to, uh, 
uh, liquidate whoever created those synthetics and buy metamaterial to make up for it. Uh, so that's kind of where that is. Howler, why no intro? I introed. I introed just fine. We introed. Don't you dare try to gaslight me on intro. I know I introed. I pressed that button. I saw that plane fly, and the big dog was breathing heavy the entire time. Okay. <clears throat> JM, as intelligent as you are, I'm very surprised you bought into the pandemic's crap. JM, shut the fuck up. Seriously. Eat shit. Go lick a doorknob. Go take up a hospital bed somewhere. Just shut the fuck up. Seriously. Oh, you guys want to get me into a rage rant again. <sighs> Viruses don't give a shit about what you believe. They don't care. They're going to do their little thing. They're going to attach to your ACE2 receptors and they're going to force cells to replicate whether you want them to or not. That's what they do. You can't think your way and make believe your way and give yourself that Tony Robbins can do spirit your way out of an infectious disease. It's just going to infect you. Whether you want it to or not, it's going to do its thing. It does not care what marketing campaign you put out there Boo, viruses. They don't give a shit. They're going to do what they do, and that's what they do. You can't PR campaign your way out of this. You can't make believe it. You can't, you know, positive thinking. If you read The Secret and you and you you envision and you make a vision board about no pandemics, the virus doesn't give a shit. You have to do actual, physical, real things to mitigate the virus, and that is wear a mask, wash surfaces in your hands, Stay away from people when you can and get vaccinated. That's it. That's all the options you have. Otherwise, you're going to get it. And if you get it, you have a 1 in 30% 1 in 30 chance of dying and a 1 in 3 chance of being permanently disabled by it. Uh, so you can't protect yourself from COVID by getting COVID. You just can't. And I know you guys are going to get me on this stupid rage again. I'm going to try and simmer down and just... Uh, but JM, shut the fuck up. Okay. There we go. Um... All right, uh, moving on, letting the rage simmer and move, just push back down again. Okay, that's the cure questions. Squamps need a bubble pipe. <laughs> Get, uh, what's the wolf hunter hat or whatever they're called? The bubble pipe, like Sherlock. Um, do, 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 do. Maximum one, two, three, four, five, one. Houston, what about the less than two fertility rate? South Korea is at 0.8 per couple. Western world's at 1.5 or something. Just add to the list. Yes, we are not replacing ourselves. Why? Because we can't afford to. Uh, everyone has got massive amounts of college debt, home debt, credit card debt, uh, their jobs aren't paying enough, inflation, you know, diseases, uh, global warming. People just aren't having kids. Why? Because they don't need to have kids. Like, if your choice was live a moderately comfortable middle class life or have kids, you're going to go, oh, man. I can live in poverty and raise some kids that will also live in poverty, or I can be able to go on vacation every once in a while and not have kids. Hmm. That's a lot of that is happening. Uh, and no one can afford to have a one income household anymore. Like you can't raise a family on one income. In the 1970s, my dad made $10,000 a year as an architect, was able to buy a home in Sullivan's Island, South Carolina, and raise a family on $10,000 a year. A family of five at $10,000 a year, right? A home in Sullivan's Island sells for $2 million now. Uh, if you want to raise a family there, you're going to have to make $400,000 a year to do it. Uh, and that's just not happening. You're not going to find architects making $400,000 a year. That doesn't happen. Uh, so, you know... The single family income household just doesn't exist anymore because we're a service economy now. And the service economy requires so many people to work as sandwich, sam subway sandwich artists uh, that we just can't, we can't have people not work. 
So we need everybody working. The problem is that we're not producing enough workers anymore. So how do you get enough workers? Immigration. That's how you do it. But we're a very xenophobic country, so we don't allow in enough immigrants anymore. So then we complain about they're not the restaurant being closed because not enough workers, uh, because we don't have enough workers because we we treat them like garbage when they try to get them to come to the country and work. Um, so we we are really like just butting heads. There's there's our needs and our ne- we're keeping our needs from being fulfilled because we're really xenophobic. Um, but yeah, Japan's population is shrinking. Korea's population is shrinking. Italy's population is shrinking. All these, all these first world nations are seeing their population shrink. And then there's population explosions in the developing world because uh, we send a bunch of missionaries there, take away their condoms, don't teach them about sex ed, and they produce 9 million kids. Um, and then their, then their countries get overridden with, with uh, uh, very youth-heavy populations. And those youth don't have jobs in their nations because they don't make anything. And uh, then they want to go somewhere to a first world nation and make stuff. But we won't let them in even though we need them. Uh, it's a very weird, very weird situation we're in there. Uh, Citadel is saying, you're still pumping GME and MAT AMC is the true OS. Eh. I mean, AMC will squeeze, but the AMC board, eh, I don't trust them. I don't trust any of them. They don't get me excited. I don't read AMC news and go, oh man, that's awesome. I read AMC news and go, oh, they just sold some more shares again. Huh. Okay. Well, eh, that's what happens when I read AMC news. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't get my bits excited at all. Um, scrolling. Project Sun, Houston, if you want to see some great architecture, look at Bob Hope's Palm Springs house. Oh, they have some really cool shit there. Uh, Bob Hope Palm Springs Home. I bet some re- Oh, that is cool. Look at that sucker. All right. That's a cool house. That is definitely a cool house. Look at that thing. Um, that is swanky. That is definitely designed for swanky parties. I dig it. I dig it a lot. Look at that thing. I would live there. Would you guys live there? What a cool house that is. Man, Bob Hope's Palm Springs house. That is a cool freaking house, man. Dude. Bob. I would live in your house. Looks like the lobby of a convention center. (laughs) Man, that's cool, though. That is really cool. Bob, that's a cool house. Man. I dig it. Who lives there now? I have no idea. Uh, does it have a Wikipedia article? Hope Residence. 23,000 square feet. That's a decent size. Bob Dolores Hope. Location, design, history. Uh, got remodeled 2016. Ah. Put on the market for 50 million. Press dropped 25 million in 2014. And finally sold for 13 million to Ron Burkle. Perko also owns the Elrod House. Elrod House. Uh, Ucapia Companies. Hmm. Distribution Logistics Company. Interesting. All right. Well, there you go. Bob Hope's house is awesome. I totally approve of that house. Uh, I like that. That's a cool house. Clean me up, Sky. I thought we were all going to Ape Fest. Well, we can go to Ape Fest. Uh, they were trying to have Ape Fest before the whole MOAS thing, and then everyone's like, no, I'm not doing that before. Uh, I'm not paying money to go to one of those things beforehand. Uh, Ghost of Unidan. There you go. Not bad. You got a new place? Fantastic. Good for you. Um, Kevin Turner, any opinion on the CAT system full, going fully online July 11th? I thought the CAT system had already gone online. Someone sent me a thing saying, no, no, no. It's only online for certain aspects of the economy. Uh, I mean, hopefully it changes some stuff, but I don't know if it's going to really change much. Uh, 
Um, how long? Someone asked, how long? Where was it? Oh, Connor Nee, how long do you think AMC and Jimmy uh, can last? Um, well, I mean, which which thing? Like the squeeze potential? It will last until they close out their their. Um, you know, it, it'll last until they close out their positions. That's that's how it goes, man. That's it. Like once they close out positions, then it's over. And uh, we've moashed and we're doing well. Citadel, you should talk AMC board like Cohen and Friends didn't tank GME lifers in July 2021, and price has not reached those levels ever since. Uh, GME hasn't sold any, hasn't dumped any stock beyond their. They took them three months to sell a couple of million shares, uh, and then they made enough cash that they are now in the money. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, they have no debt. They've expanded their sales reach. They've created a new logistics network. Uh, you can't ask for more than that. Um, man, there you go. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. What you want from a company is you want cash on hand and you want an expanding market. And they've done that. Uh, AMC has, they, they have cash, but all that cash is because they borrowed a bunch of money. Um, they, all the insiders have sold off all their shares. Uh, they've dumped millions of shares in the market all at once to short hedge funds. And, you know, they have no op, they have no options be uh, for expanding into new markets because they have one play and that's movie theaters. So they've spent a lot of time, um, they bought up theaters. So yeah, they've got, they control more screens. They use this pandemic to buy those screens at cheap, which is probably a good play, but they got to do something about their $5 billion in debt. That's a lot of debt to have. And uh, I don't I don't know how they're going to get out of it. There was some talk about, hey, sell 500 million shares, double the float, um, get out of it that way. Because if there's 4 billion synthetics, then it shouldn't matter. And then pay off your debt that way. Which, you know, if they're going to sell shares to pay off debt, I could probably get on board with it. But they have been selling shares and not paying off debt. So there you go. That's... Uh, you know, they just haven't they just haven't been doing what I would hope they'd be doing, which is pay off debt and figure out new streams of revenue. Um, but yeah, so you know, eh. that's the way it is. That's life. Space monkey, more rage. Tell tell, tell those losers down. Tube rage, tube rage, tube rage. My wife loves your rages. I love them too. <laughs> Trying to center my chi. I'm wearing a cool shirt. I'm gonna center my chi today because of my cool shirt centering the chi. Right? Everyone who's making noises and sleeping on toes around here. Plus having a warm dog on your toes, just it's really hard to stay mad for long. It's nice, really comfy. Alright, I am 40 minutes behind the chat. Let's try to scoop down and get some of these more up-to-date chatter spots here. Uh because you know. Skip that stuff in the middle. Why not? <clears throat> All right. Uh, Euro junk. Houston, do you think the invasion of Ukraine will escalate beyond Ukraine? Will China decide to take Taiwan? Uh, when will NATO get more involved? Oh, man. Okay. Will it move beyond Ukraine? Yes, it most definitely will. Uh, I think it'll move beyond you. I think it already has. I think I think Putin has had nudged Iran to launch those missiles into into Iraq to get the U.S. to go what and distract us, and we didn't take the bait. We went oh they didn't really destroy anything. Moving on. Um, I think China would have been full on board if Russia wasn't getting its ass kicked right now. Uh, China been like yeah baby we'll send you some tanks and whatnot, and you know what we're gonna since. NATO isn't doing anything about this. We're going to go take Taiwan because uh, they're a bunch of pussies. And I think they saw NATO and all these nations crush the Russian economy in five days to the point where Russia is never going to climb out of this. They are done. Putin's Russia is done financially pretty much forever. And China, China's no dummies. Yeah, they want Taiwan really bad, but at what cost? If it means they lose all of their customers, their trillions of dollars a year in customers that will no longer buy their plastic shit, 
And they're like, you know what? We'll set up factories in Bangladesh or, or Africa or wherever. We'll buy our plastic shit from elsewhere. And China will go, oh, huh. We now have no economy because no one will do trade with us. And China isn't a, a uh, hydrocarbon rich resource country. They have to get their hydrocarbons from elsewhere. They got some coal mines. They got some good coal patches. But you are not going to run a modern economy if all your cars have to be coal operated. Um, and so they're going to have to get gas and oil from elsewhere. And yeah, Russia can provide that gas and oil, but it won't do any good if no one's buying your products. If you have to, retur- if you have to return to an internal market like pre-1970s, uh, China had a really shitty economy pre-1970s. Um, they require, they need U.S. dollars and euros. They import those U.S. dollars and euros and they send their plastic shit out from there. Uh, a lot of electronics manufacturing is run by a Taiwanese company, Foxconn. And if Foxconn destroys their tooling or moves their tooling elsewhere, then there goes a huge chunk of their GDP that's dependent upon making cell phones and TV and, and computers and motherboards and whatnot. So... Uh, I think China's really weighing these options. They're going, huh. First of all, Russia's getting its ass kicked really badly with really cheap weapons. Uh, so if we give them our tanks and our tanks get destroyed as well, then we lose a bunch of tanks. So, and it would be a terrible advertisement for our weapon sales in the future. So they may they may go, huh, we might, we might not want to give Russia that stuff. Plus... But on the other hand, you know, Russia as a vassal state of China would be a huge pump to the ego for the Chinese uh, politicos. Um, And it would be completely demoralizing to see like Putin, like bow lowly to his new Chinese overlords, which is the exact opposite of what he's trying to do, which is become a global hegemony himself and make, make Russia a superpower once again. And in you know, three short weeks, he's completely destroyed any possibility of that. That is really interesting to, like, think about. Um, yeah. So, hmm. But, yeah, NATO may get involved more directly. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if we see NATO do things inside Belarus first. Uh because Belarus is pissing everyone off in Europe, as it is. Uh, Lukashenko is an asshole, and he lost an election, and he uh, shouldn't be leading Belarus. And it sounds like the Belarusian military is like, we don't want anything to do with this. You're on your own, man. Which is a big step uh, away from Lukashenko's orders, where before he could get the Belarusian military to do all sorts of stuff to the, pub- the public that lives in Belarus. So if they are now like trying to distance themselves, uh, there might be an opening to... Um, Take Lukashenko, Lukashenko out. <clears throat> oh, Xbit wrote it earlier in the chat. Oh, okay, great. I have to go back and find some Xbit stuff earlier in the chat. Okay, Xbit meta material. Hopefully, it didn't disappear when I when the chat reset and I can find it. Xbit, 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 Xbit. Uh. I'm not seeing it as I scroll and I'm almost back to the top and it's gone now. So if Xbit, you want to type it in there again, I'll look for it. Sorry, man. I didn't realize it was in the chat. I have no idea where, what, how, when, why. Uh, Okay, here we go. All right. We are at this point in the chat. Zachary Deilia says, I always think $70 is the magic number they would drop it to before Moas. Who knows? It's a good gut feeling as any. Um, after hours, it didn't really seem like it's doing much. It's kind of sitting at that 79 range, right? Still there? It is... We can scroll. Yeah, 79.92. Still kind of sitting in the same same realm right now. I don't know how much further they can drop it before earnings before the earnings call. Because especially if they got to push it down the day after the earnings call, I don't know how how much of their margin they can waste on this. But they probably made a good chunk today, uh, doing puts on some stuff. So you know, uh, SK, what do you think about the YouTubers like uh, Review Dork and Matt Coors selling out of their AMC positions while telling the rest of us to hold and not to set stop losses? 
I had not heard that. I have no idea. So that's the first I hear of it. Um, I think it's I think it's uh, sketchy to. Oh, hey, 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 big dog, big dog. Sorry. Big dog. Big dog. Big dog. Big dog. Big dog. Came out and saw me. Uh, that's, that's, that's okay. okay. You know, that's okay. You know him. You saw him like an hour ago. Yeah, he woke you up and it scared you. Alright. <laughs> Sorry. Big dog, this is not your house to protect, dummy. This is not your protection at home. Just go back to sleep. <laughs> uh, trying to eat the roommates. Yeah. Chill out, baby. Take a nap. Take a nap. It's okay. You can take naps. What were we talking about? Uh, before Big Dog freaked out, it was, oh, uh, people selling out and telling others not to sell. That, you know, you do with your money what you want to do. Uh, but if I change holdings, I'm going to let you know, right? I don't have much AMC, so I am way more invested in GME and other things than AMC play. Uh, but you know, I'm not big on it. I don't, I don't, I don't think it was what it was back in June. I think it could have been the trigger back in June for sure. But, uh, it, 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 but the board w wouldn't let that happen. Uh, they probably don't want, like have to see their buddies at the golf course and be like, sorry about that, man. We just had to obliterate your hedge fund. <laughs> no hard feelings. Um, so I think I think that's kind of where they were, uh, but yeah, it, you know, I think people should be open, and honest about what they do, and what they promote. Uh, I've been getting these like, what's the name of it? T something something something. Sorry, one sec. I, these guys have been like hounding me to do promos for them as a sponsor. I can't remember the name of them. <laughs> where are you? Where are you? Uh, when was the last time you messaged me? Um, TSX or something like that? TRX. So there's some thing called TRX. They have a crypto coin. They have some sort of like mining network. And they really, really, really want me to do like promos for them. And they're being so obtuse in what they do and how they use it and how they're going to pay me. And like, you know, I'm not going to promote your brand on my channel, be like the first brand I promote on my channel. If you aren't going to be straightforward with me, be honest. Hey, 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 sit, sit. Richard's good. Richard's good. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. See, we'll shake hands. No, we won't. We don't want to shake hands. <laughs> but he's good. He's Sorry. fine. He's fine. He lives here. This is his home. He's allowed to have a home. He's allowed to have a home. So are you. Okay? All right. <laughs> Shut up. All right. Poor guy can't go to the bathroom without getting yelled at by the big dog. Big dog. You, I am not your herd. I am your alpha. You just do what I say. And everything's cool, right? Yeah. He, People are allowed to go to the bathroom without you yelling at them. Okay. Yes. Just chillax, baby. Just chillax. That's what we're here to do. We're, we're here to chillax. Maybe JM got him up in a rage and just wanted to go as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. 454. I got six minutes and then I go back and relieve some folks who are watching my mom. This is a tomorrow is the last day of, of, of Mom Watch 2021. So she won't be required to have somebody in the house with her at all times at that, after that point. So I can probably come back and have a little more free time. Um, bum, 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 bum. Oh, okay. Bob Norwood. Xbit wrote earlier in the chat that uh, 46.5 pound had been credited to his MMTLP shares in his HL account. He said uh, he sent an email to HL and was waiting for a reply. Huh. Not heard by any of that. I've got my MTLP in Fidelity. Um, might be because it's a foreign account. Something squishy is going on there. Now I still have all my MMTLP and my Fidelity. 
down to a buck sixty. I mean, it'd be nice if 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 that weird graphic turns out to uh, you know be able to net me a hundred grand off of these things. That'd be fantastic. I I it's very optimistic that it would be that high of a dividend, but man, it'd be great if it was. I don't think it will be. I think I think you know twenty to forty range is good. I think that's probably pretty doable. Beyond that would be fantastic, but I just don't see how it happens. Okay. <clears throat> Boomers know how to hodl. <laughs> oh, that's a good name. I like that. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. PG, is it too late to chase to get into MMAT or the preferred shares? Uh, dump my high XXX shares AMC and go all in. Is AMC going to moon higher? Not looking for financial advice. Uh, oh, man. I I think AMC shares can definitely go higher. But will it happen sooner than MMAT would offer a dividend? That's the question. Now, you know, I've got... I've got my holdings of GME and AMC and if if Moas happens the way it should happen that will hopefully be enough that I can retire on that Bing. but I am counting on the M Metamaterial Torchlight Preferred Share Dividend to be offered hopefully sooner I get a bunch of cash from that three months after a dividend is issued Metamaterial squeezes because of the failure, failure to delivers on the PILs and forced buying happens on metamaterials to make up for it. So I have options that go bang on that and that gets me a boatload. And if it, if all that happens before uh, MOAS, then I can take that stuff and I can dump it into MOAS, into GME. And that's where I'm playing. And then I can go from like retirement amount of GameStop to just a ridiculous, uh, fantastic fortune of it. Um, that's where that's where that's where I'm playing, and so uh, you know, if if the meta material gets me twenty grand plus for uh, the sorry the torchlight preferred share gets me twenty grand plus, that's enough to get a thousand plus options on meta material. Which, if it does squeeze in the next year, could net me, you know, millions. Which is enough, also enough for retirement. So, yay. Uh, I just want to retire, man. <laughs> that's that's it. That's I want I want to be able to take that dog for like thirty mile walks every day in really nice weather. What do you think? Does that sound good to you? I think it sounds good to you. This loud thing can come along every once in a while, at least for the next few months, right? And then it goes back to your house that has a really, really nice view at your house. What are you doing here without our view, your nice view? Um, but yeah, okay. All right, oh crap, we're there. We're going to scroll down to the bottom here. Uh, and get the last couple of questions, and I got a jet to go on to Mom Watch. Uh, -boom -boom. Ricky Bobby it makes no sense. Why would a company care about helping their buddies out that try to short them? You know, that silent nights BS theory. Here's the thing: is that those guys, their buddies, are who put them in their job. Short hedge funds. Read, read Anatomy of a Short Attack from 2014. Short hedge funds will get enough shares while they're shorting the crap out of a company, so they can put their fixers in on the board. There's a reason why the head of marketing for AMC was the head of marketing for Radio Shack the head of marketing for Blockbuster, and the head of marketing for Washington Mutual. Those three companies don't exist anymore for a reason because the head of marketing for AMC, his job was to help obliterate those companies. That's the entire reason they have that role. It, they'll put insiders, hedge fund insiders, in on the board and executive positions at uh, the companies they're shorting. That's what they do. So uh, they can... They can, they can ruin contracts, destroy logistics, make sure that research dollars go elsewhere, uh, the marketing budgets are wasted, that, you know, they their job is to eat the company from the inside so that the hedge funds from the outside uh, can, can win in the end. And that's what they do, man. 
So, um, that's, that's, that's why, that's why, you know, Ryan Cohen bought 10% of Bed Bath and Beyond. And it was like, Hey, I wrote a letter to the board and the board didn't respond back. I wonder why that is because a lot of the board of Bed Bath and Beyond are insiders for the hedge funds. Uh, I, someone mentioned we should do like a, like a Wikipedia of corporate insiders and see which companies have, have been obliterated on their watch and who, who, who they're working for now. And it would be a great, uh, uh, metadata analysis of just how incestuous these groups are. Um, when I had uh, Laser Haas on here and we were talking about eToys, the same people were in charge of the same companies every single time they got they got just obliterated, right? So, you know, you have you have your guys and their job is, you know, you'll give them millions of dollars to destroy this company. And then the next time you take over a company, you'll give them millions of dollars to destroy that company. And then they'll just do that over and over and over again. They'll just destroy company after company because that's their job. And that's what was happening at GameStop. And Ryan Cohen came in and kicked those guys out. You're fired, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. Boom. Now he's all his people in at GameStop and he controls the board. And the short hedge funds don't have anybody anymore. But it's not the same at a lot of these meme stock companies are still controlled by hedge fund insiders. And that's their buddies. That's why, you know, you don't want to piss them off too much because you they go to the same, your kids go to the same uh, private school and your dad's all play golf at the same country club and your wives are all members of the same, I don't know, social society or whatever. It's Stepford stuff, man. Okay. Could you make the dog bark once more? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can, but someone else might be able to do it. <laughs> that would imply hedge funds cheat. Yes, they are cheaters. Okay. Uh, elevated finance, you completely censored every single question and remark I had. You lost a viewer today for sure. I will spread the word. Thanks for nothing, pal. Elevated finance, um... Also complaining, okay, well, there's completely ignoring all my important remarks and questions. Uh, elevated Finance, appreciate the honesty. If that's true with AMC, and I suspect it, a lot of your views are financially ruined. I most likely can't continue to support you either. It's full loosing venture all around. Uh, if I scroll up, find Elevated Finance in here. Um, elevated Finance, as soon as they get off the petrodollar, it's an act of war from China as well. So I find more more their elevated finance. China's directly buying resources from Russia. How is it not? How is that not a threat? An act of war towards the U.S. Um, I mean, I can try to read your stuff here, buddy, and answer your and answer your questions. Uh, no one wants to go to war with anybody. That's a problem. Because the war sucks, or costs lives, dollars, waste of time. It's not unpopular at home. Uh, no one wants to like go to war. If war happens to you and everyone goes, oh shit, war happened to us. I guess I got to rally around and protect the homeland. That's a pop more popular thing than just like going on. Oh, it's going to start wars with people. Those are never popular. Uh, but China's allowed to do what China does, right? They, they're, they're allowed to, to do deals with Russia. Uh, we can look down upon it and we can say, hey, you know, we're going to sanction you, China, for doing those deals with Russia. China's going to go, oh, so what? We're still going to sell plastic crap. And you still want our plastic crap. Uh, it just becomes a tit for tat at that point. Um, but your other questions, I don't know why you're having a hissy fit. You can have a hissy fit all you want. People are allowed to, people are allowed to have hissy fits. Um, yes. So I try to get the questions when I can. I won't see all the questions. I'll try to read them when I can. Uh, sometimes this whole chat resets and then deletes like an hour worth of chats. And it's a dumb system that YouTube has here, but that's what they do. Uh, cut off at about like four o'clock. So I can't see any chats earlier than four o'clock. Anyway, uh, monkey butt is hiding in the, I have not had a chance to clean up the guts of that little dog that, um, she was given there. She's like a nest of cotton over here that she's sleeping in. Uh, but yeah, I gotta get out of here guys. Um, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Not sure what time on Wednesday. Probably afternoon towards evening. But now it's daylight savings, so after dark happens a lot later now. Because it doesn't sun doesn't set till after 7 p.m. Um But yeah, uh big dog, little dog, all the dogs. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. We gotta say good, good, good goodbye. Monkey butt. Come on. Get up here. Come on. 
Come on. Come over here, monkey. Come on. Monkey pet. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Everybody in the camera. Let's go. Let's go. We got a big dog. We got a little dog. We're going to do an intro and say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Oh, didn't you?